Hello, tankers! Some say that a Friday without the vlog would cause the Earth to start spinning in the opposite direction. I really have no idea whether that's true or not, but let's not find out. In today's episode… Star Series results advantage on the new update and May holidays in Tanki. Let's start! Last week was all about Star Series, which ended with what's probably one of the most intense grand finals we have ever had in Tanki. GGWP entered the battle with a head start of 1-0, but this advantage didn't stop Arcade from securing the victory. Arcade Esports are the champions. By the way, this is the team's fourth major tournament win in a row. Arcade came out victorious from the 8th Clan Championship, as well as three seasons of Star Series. For those of you who for some reason didn't manage to catch any of the battles on this busy eSports week, we have prepared a brief review of all six final matches. It is waiting for you right now on the homepage. The link is below. Of course, right now, eSports fans are probably wondering what's next. Next, everything goes according to the plan. The preparations are underway for the fourth season of AM, Semi, Pro and, of course, Star Series. It all starts in May. On a final note, if you've been wanting for a more casual and fun eSports experience, you will love the Hexathlon event. It's an awesome chance for you to grab some of your friends and win up to 400,000 crystals per team member using almost any combination of turrets and hulls. Registrations are open till the 29th of April. All the info is on the homepage. The link is below. This Thursday, we made a number of corrections to the game's balance. The changes affected basically all turrets and hulls. How has the update affected the balance of forces in the game? Let's ask our independent expert, Ivanich. This week, the developers of Tanky Online rolled out some changes to the parameters of turrets and hulls, which is good. The balance should be worked on continuously, as it never stands still, always shifting one way or another over time. Let's start with turrets. Firebird's burning damage has been increased, but will that help it rule the battlefield? Very good question. That's because now the slight malady caused by Firebird can easily be cured by taking one dose of repair kit or consulting an experienced Tisida. Any burning sensations will cease. Freeze has received an increase in damage and faster recharge speed, but a decrease in amount of energy. So the new Freeze deals damage faster, which on paper should make it more efficient. Also, the gun freezes enemy hulls less effectively than before, while turrets are slowed down a lot more. But the most drastic change is the longer freezing effect, which slows down gameplay quite a lot. Another thing to note is that Firebird and Freeze have had their effective range decreased by half, so remember that now the full damage of these turrets is done at distances of up to 5 meters. Isida received an increase in amount of energy, recharge speed and range, but a decrease in cone width. Now it's pretty hard to lock Isida on an enemy tank in close range combat, but at the distance of 10 meters or more it has become more efficient than ever. From what I understand, this was done for the sake of separating Firebird, Freeze and Isida in terms of their effective ranges. Hammer now has a slightly longer reload time and a wider cone of pellets. These changes are so insignificant that you may easily overlook them. Nevertheless, Hammer has obviously been nerfed. Twin's full damage range has been decreased by half to 15 meters. On the other hand, many other parameters have been improved. Now Twins is much more powerful in close-range battles and significantly less powerful when attacking from a distance. Ricochet has received a slight increase in effective range, reload speed, impact force, projectile speed and even projectile size. However, as in case of Hammer, no profound changes. 
Smokey's standard damage has been increased, while its critical damage has been decreased. All in all, Smokey is now more effective for its owner and at the same time less of an irritation for enemies. Vulcan has had an increase in burning self damage, which works the same way as damage caused by Firebird. Turret rotation speed when firing has also slowed down a bit. It is said that the impact force has also been decreased, but Vulcan players still blow away my tanks pretty much like before. Thunder has received an increase in damage and a decrease in firing rate, which looks like an advancement, because having high one-time damage is great. Splash damage mechanism has also been reworked. Previously, to deal maximum damage, it was enough to hit next to the enemy tank. Now you have to hit the enemy tank directly, so you have to aim better. Railgun has received a handy increase in firing rate in impact force and high ranks, while Shaft has received a boost to damage per shot when in arcade mode. Now, shooting without the scope is a much better option than before. Now let's take a look at the hulls. Wasp and Hornet have received an increase in weight. Wasp also received an increase in acceleration. However, because of large-scale turret improvements, light hulls often suffer even more than ever. The developers decided to swap Hunter and Viking once again, so Hunter's weight has decreased while Viking's has increased. Additionally, maneuverability of Hunter, Dictator, Titan and Mammoth has been increased, which means they now turn faster. All in all, developers are heading in the right direction. I consider the new changes to the parameters of most turrets as suitable. Hulls now require quite a lot more attention. Light hulls are often lacking protection, while heavies need more agility. And the main thing, distinguishing hulls from each other even more, making them individual. I encourage everyone to test the new update in person and share impressions on the Tanky forum, so that the game designers can take your opinion into account when making upcoming changes to the parameters of turrets and hulls, which I hope are not too far off. Along with balanced tweaks, the update brought a number of small but pretty handy changes. All the info about them is on Tanky website. A vlog without a video of the week. Inconceivable. Let's check out the best clip for this week. Tankers, just a week left till the 1st of May, and we have already received a lot of questions about what we have been preparing for the holidays this year. Time to tell you all about it. Get ready for a whopping 11 days of May holidays, 4 days of double battle funds, 5 days of gold boxes worth between 5000 and 9000 crystals, and of course, discounts. 25% off turrets, hulls and paints, 50% off micro upgrades and 80% off speed ups. Of course, the game will feature themed decorations, a holiday paint, as well as unique flags, billboards and parachutes. And one last thing, something entirely in you. On the 9th of May, you'll be able to purchase a special pass that will provide you with unlimited supplies for a full day for just 70 crystals. Unlimited supplies, 9000 crystal gold boxes. You got it, right? This will be one hell of a gold hunt. That's it, tankers. Time to wrap up another vlog. Play with updated weapons, get ready for May holidays in Tanki, and hit the like button if you are already looking forward to the next episode. See you next Friday!